I brought in, um, I brought this guitar in there to get fixed, and he's like, I'll buy that if you want to sell it. Oh, that's awesome. That's <laughs> great. It, it weighs like four pounds. It's this tiny little thing I got from my uncle years ago. It's um, You can look down the neck and just see how totally not in good shape it is. It's like twisting and he's like yeah if, if you uh if you tighten up the you know, mess with the trust rod at all that thing will never get back so it's just going to be what it is and essentially you know you could play it for a song and then it'll go out of tune <laughs> yeah but, that's kind of like th this one that i use for a slide guitar it's that's a, an electro yeah the fee yeah, my 59 dano oh cool yeah so this is funny that, um and, and literally while when i brought that in there somebody else was like if he won't buy it i'll buy it and somebody was offering like 250 bucks for this guitar it's probably you know, worth nothing. Um, but, you know, Uncle gave it to me, and I call it, like, it's part of my Jack White collection. <laughs> I love it, yeah. Well, here, oh, I'm going to show you this guitar. Scrunky. Scrunked out and ridiculous, cheap garage sale guitar. Yes, I remember this. This is, um, my neighbor got this for me. It's a license plate guitar with with from Coahoma um, County in Mississippi. And you just play slide guitar on it, you know? Sweet. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's probably all it's good for, right? <laughs> that's about what it's good for, because the action is just like... I, well, yeah, yeah good, good for a slide. Maybe an Ebo. <laughs> you can Ebo it, too. It's got a pickup in it. That's what the Corona Camp is for. Well, um, on, a, on a related note, you remember this little beastie? You, you gave me this. That's awesome. Yeah, you remember this, the, the Harmony? Yeah, super cool. Yeah, well, thank you. I, I get. I remember when you were like, "Yeah, you know, I can't. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this, but if you want it here." And I went, just, "Of course, I'll take that." So um, yeah, I got. I got this thing working. It's another one of those kind of scrunky, you know, weird notes everywhere. But uh, it's it's pretty cool. Still. Those are the best kind of guitars. I mean, like Link Ray didn't get the sound that he had playing. Um, you know, uh, some really fancy, sophisticated guitar. He was playing Dan Electros and Supros. Yeah. I mean, it just goes to show essentially like whatever, whatever you can get a good sound out of is, is good. All right. That's why I always say like, you know, if, if it sounds good, it is good. Um, I play, uh, well, I'll, I'll pull the bass out because the guitar is a little hard to get to, but I have a, a line of these PV instruments and PV is generally not known for their instruments. It's like their amps are great. You can throw them down a flight of stairs, pick them up and you know rumble the building with them but i have this um this is like a pvt 40 bass and i have the, right. the guitar which is a t uh, 15 and this thing weighs like 25 pounds it sounds like a cross between a rickenbacker and a p bass maybe in a jazz it's got these four knobs you can twist it and turn it and make it do you know whatever sound you want but it's gigantically heavy but such a unique sound and it's it's weird too because you know again people generally regard PV instruments as not being very good quality with the exception of this T line, like basically three guitars. Uh, wow, you know, okay. guitars and bass. Yeah, and, and they're really cool. I, I love the, the T15 is a short scale. Look, I have arthritis, so it's hard for me to do uh, chords. You know what I mean? So if a short scale is actually a little bit easier. So I have to kind of make it a little more. I think PV is like down south and a lot of like, I, I think that Junior Kimbrough uses a PV guitar sometimes and they definitely use some PV ampage. Oh, the, the amps were great. Again, they're just built like tanks. Um, but uh, the, as far as the instruments are concerned, it, it's generally, they, for whatever reason, I think it was, you know, the, the telltale sign where, you know, it starts off being made, you know, by people here, you know, in America and whatnot and then something happens somebody buys them up and then they wind up you know shipping them out for uh you know cheaper manufacturing and it's just not the same quality um but yeah th those are cool, they're, they're cool instruments yeah yeah i dig it you know it's classic um i'm not like i'm really uh, you know a guitar player but i'm i'm getting better you know um this is like my one of my all-time favorite guitars i remember I that one yeah, yeah that and, the, and then the the hollow body you have is really beautiful too Oh yeah, that's a great one. That um, that my '61 Gretsch, '61 19. Yeah, yeah, that's a great guitar. We played that when I was playing with you back in the um, Tiger Cat days. Yes. And then back when we were doing our um, duo, that you were playing some of that music before. Um, I was playing that. I was playing this uh, my Supro um, rhythm tone 
which basically now is a duo tone because I stuck two pickups on it. And that's the mm -hmm. only difference. Now that's a 58. Um, that's, it's kind of in pieces now. I need to get it fixed. <laughs> oh, no. Well, I remember, you know, your tone uh, is, is such a big part of why I love your playing. Um, you know, and I think a lot of that has to do, you know, A, the guitars, but your rack of, you know, all the, the gear that you have. Plus, I, I remember you have, I have it, one of them too, but uh, the modified Big Muff that you have. That... Oh, yeah. Yeah, my buddy Travis tore my Big Muff apart and modified it to the specs of his um, old Triangle Muff from the 70s. Um, Give it more mid. Right, because it always sounded kind of thin, you know. I needed. Yeah, to get it, it basically hurts. took some of the gain, the 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 compression and gain away from it, pushed the mid range frequencies, and made it just more articulate, and it made it so that I could play it with my Gretsch, and it wouldn't just be a like a just a total symphony uh, of feedback that was uncontrollable. Instead, it would center in on frequencies, especially when I play it through my old. Um, deluxe reverb amp or deluxe amp um it doesn't have reverb 65 deluxe um mm -hmm. that that's what i used to use back in with tiger cat is that 65 deluxe the 61 gretch and then for overdrive that big muff and the big muff would just roar whereas um i would have um, i have another one a prescription electronics experience pedal which is another infamously infamously cool and great fuzz tone pedals um, but that one only works with a hollow body when you put it on the octave up setting. Okay. Like if you put it on full fuzz, if you just get like, it rumbles through that thing, huh? Yeah, it just rumbles through. But, uh, but when you snap the, um, octave up to give it like this foxy lady sound, um, it sounds amazing. Oh my God. And sometimes you can play with that and get the high frequencies going and then a a, a low frequency will start to emanate out of the guitar, but it's controllable and it's like this great low feedback that um, I've, I've been able to, to give one of my favorite sounds.